Hi, very good morning. Uh, this is a Supreme Court judgment under Arbitration and Conciliation Act. Section 11, that is appointment of arbitrator. Case references Arif Asim Company Limited versus Aptec Limited. Uh, before uh, getting into the law portion, naturally the background facts are very important. So facts. AACL, that is uh, Arif Asim Company Limited. This is the petitioner who approached the Supreme Court. It is a company registered in Afghanistan. It is engaged in the business of training in computer education. The respondent company, that is Aptec Limited, it is a company having registered office in Mumbai. It is also in the same business, training in computer education, information technology. Both of them entered into franchisee agreements. The respondent, that is the Mumbai company, is the franchisor. And the Afghanistan company, that is the franchisee. The petitioner, that is the Afghanistan company, was given non-exclusive license. Then, Indian Council for Cultural Relations in Delhi, they invited proposals for training students from Afghanistan in English. It's a short term course. So the students will be given training to pursue the degree courses in Indian universities under the scholarship scheme of the government of India. The proposal of the respondent company, that is the Mumbai company, was accepted and sanction order was issued. The ICCR, that is the cultural, uh, uh, Indian cultural uh, relation, uh, this thing, that uh, wing, what they said was, the fee, they fixed the fee of rupees 5000 plus service tax per student per month. That is the cost that will be given to the respondent company. Uh, I am skipping, uh, so many facts were there in between. I am skipping everything because uh, the law is more important. The facts, background facts, if you know a little bit, that is enough. Uh, otherwise, it will be too long. So, dispute arose between the parties. Because there were disputes regarding the royalties and other things. I am skipping those things. Now, this main dispute is this one. The dispute arose between the parties in relation to uh, payment of royalties and other things. One of the dispute is this non-payment of amount from ICCR. Uh, the dispute, especially this dispute, the payment dispute with regard to this uh, education fee, ICCR education fee, came to your halt on 28-3-2018. The dates are very important for this case. So, please note down. 28-3-2018, the dispute for non-payment of the amount from ICCR came to your halt. <coughs> After nine months, the Afghanistan company sent an email to the Mumbai company raising the same issue. The issue was raised by way of a legal notice. The date is 26-8-2021. At least uh, uh, the, the gap was three years. Then after 10 months, the Afghanistan company invoked pre-institution mediation before the mediation center, Mumbai. The date was 5-7-2022. The respondent refused to go for mediation and he issued a letter also. Sorry, we are not uh, prepared for mediation. Then a report, non-starter report was issued. After the failure of the mediation, the Afghanistan company sent a notice invoking arbitration. This date was 24-11-2022. So, please kindly note the uh, dates in a small paper, just four or five dates. Then only you will understand the full legal issue. Otherwise, uh, you may understand, but the, uh, uh, but the important things you may miss. That is why I am saying this. 
So, while the notice, petitioner called upon the this uh, uh, invoking arbitration notice, the petitioner called upon the respondent to pay 1.50 crores, whatever is the amount. And uh, naturally, the Mumbai company denied all the claims. It also refused to appoint the arbitrator. It also said, uh, your claim is barred by limitation. Sorry. Uh, so, there is no need for going for arbitration. That is what it said. Then, on 19-4-2023, the Afghanistan company approached the Supreme Court, being an international commercial arbitration, it approached the Supreme Court for appointment of arbitrator. The issue before the Supreme Court uh, was whether the Limitation Act 1963 is applicable to an application for appointment of arbitrator under Section 11.6 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. Here after ANC Act, uh, every time saying Arbitration and Conciliation Act, that itself will consume so much of time. So ANC Act. Then the connected question was, if yes, whether the present petition is barred by limitation or not. That is the main question before the Supreme Court. So the general principle in any case, in any court, general principle is this. The law will assist only those who are vigilant and not those who sleep over their rights. So if you, if you have a case, if you have a right to appeal, you must immediately act. You cannot sleep over the case for uh, several years and then come to the court. Then your claim will be barred by limitation. Supreme Court says, a plain reading of section 11.6 of ANC Act indicates that there is no time limit for filing an application. If you take 11.6 of Arbitration Act, then there is no time limit. They did not say within which time you have to file an uh, application for appointment of arbitrator. However, Section 43 of ANC Act states, Limitation Act will apply to arbitration proceedings as it applies to the proceedings in court. So, 43 clearly says this. Since none of the articles in the schedule of limitation, the Limitation Act provides a time limit for filing an application under Section 11.6, it will be covered under Article 137, which is three years when the right to apply accrues. So, the question was uh, whether the Limitation Act will apply. Supreme Court says, because of Section 43, Limitation, will act, uh, limitation Act will surely apply. But, what is the starting point of three years? That is very, very important. When the right to apply accrues. That is the starting point. Then Supreme Court relied on a, a seven be bench judgment, which said that the issue of limitation being one of threshold importance, it must be decided at the pre-reference stage so that the other party is not dragged through a long drawn arbitration, which would be expensive and time consuming. So, if the limitation for the, your claim has gone, then there is no point in applying in appointing an arbitrator. So it will be a time-consuming process. People will be spending so much of money. A similar view was expressed in Joe Miller case also, where Supreme Court says it is well settled by virtue of Limitation Act. The, the limitation period for reference of a dispute to arbitration or for seeking appointment of an arbitrator before a court is three years, the following words are very important. From the date on which is the cause of action or the claim which is sought to be arbitrated first arises. So, three years from, from which date? From the date on which is the cause of action or the claim which is sought to be arbitrated first arises. Supreme Court held that there is no doubt that the Limitation Act will apply to arbitration proceedings in general and that Article 137 of the Limitation Act, uh, the prescribing the period of three years, will definitely apply to the Section 11.6 application for appointment of arbitrator. Now, this connected question, when does the right to apply under Section 11.6 accrues? That is the connected question. 
Supreme Court says in a catena of decisions that the limitation period for making an application seeking appointment of an arbitrator should not be confused with the limitation period for raising the substantive claims which are sought to be referred to arbitration. Please note, there is a different, two different things are there. One is limitation period for appointment of arbitrator. Second is limitation period for your claim. There are two things. You should not confuse one thing with the other. The limitation period for filing an application seeking appointment of arbitrator, that is the first one. Limitation period for appointment of arbitrator commences only after a valid notice invoking arbitration has been issued by one of the parties to the other party. And there has been either a failure or refusal on the part of the other party to make an appointment as per the appointment procedure agreed upon between the parties. So when the limitation period commences for appointment of arbitrator, Supreme Court says only when the other one party issues notice, other parties either refuses or fails to act on that, then only the limitation period will commence. Otherwise, it will not. Supreme Court says in the present case, notice invoking arbitration was issued on 24-11-2022. One month then it was delivered to the respondent, that is the Mumbai company, on 29-11-2022. One month period was given to the Mumbai company, either pay the money or appoint the arbitrator. That period expired because date of receipt was 29-11-2022, period expired on 28-12-2022. Respondent replied on 5-4-2023. So, the limitation clock starts running only from 28-12-2022. That is the date by which time the party, Mumbai party should have replied or appointed the arbitrator. They did not, they do that. So, the limitation clock will start uh, uh, ticking only from 28-12-2022. Present petition seeking appointment of arbitrator was filed on 19-4-2023. Hence, it is well within the period of limitation. That is why I said you must note down the dates. Otherwise, you will get slightly confused. You may even though understand the principle, but you will get slightly confused. So, in a nutshell, Supreme Court says the arbitration will commence only after issue of the notice and then the person receiving the notice fails to act uh, or uh, refuses to act. Then only the period will commence. That is the uh, main point. And the second issue was whether the court may refuse to make a reference under Section 11 where the claim is claims are ex facie and hopelessly time barred. Suppose if there is a time bar, two claims were there, already I said. One is appointment of arbitrator. That is one. Second is your main claim, money claim. Both have three years time. In the second class, that is when your main claim, that is money claim, is ex facie or hopelessly time barred. Whether the court may refuse to appoint the arbitrator is the question. Hope I made myself clear. Uh, jurisdiction, the court examined and said there are two things. One is jurisdiction, another is admissibility. Two types of issues may arise. Jurisdiction issue or maintainability issues refers to the power and authority of the arbitrator to decide a case. That is, it may relate to competence of arbitrator, existence of an arbitration agreement, etc. Admissibility issue means nature of the claim and it will include challenges to procedural requirements. For example, mandatory requirement for pre-reference mediation. Procedural. First, before you go for this thing, you have to go for mediation. Then, claim or a part of the claim is barred by limitation, etc. In Bharat Sanjar Niham Limited case, Supreme Court held, the issue of limitation is essentially an admissibility issue and not a challenge to the jurisdiction of the arbitrator. Although 
limitation is an admissibility issue yet it is the duty of the court to prima facie examine and reject non arbitrable or dead claims so as to protect the other party from being drawn into a time consuming and costly arbitration process of course it is a procedural issue but court says the court must prima facie see whether this uh, it is relating to a dead claim so 3 years is the uh, period of uh, claim suppose you come after 10 years and uh, ask the supreme court or any other court to appoint an arbitrator your claim is a dead claim so the court may refuse to uh, appoint an arbitrator that is what the supreme court says supreme court relies on the ntpc limited case which mentioned the i of the needle test what is this i of needle test as a general rule and principle arbitral tribunal is the preferred authority first authority to determine and decide all questions of non arbitrability exception to the rule the referral court may reject the claims which are manifestly and expressly non arbitrable the standard of scrutiny to examine non arbitrability of a claim is only prima facie this is very important so the court cannot go on to all the facts dig out the facts examine everything arguments this side that side everything then only if it comes then it is not the prima facie case standard of scrutiny is prima facie just on saying it whether the case is uh, whether the uh, claim is barred by limitation so court must take only limited scrutiny uh, that is through the eye of the needle which is necessary and compelling it is the duty of the referral court to protect the parties from being forced to arbitrate when the matter is demonstrably non arbitrable uh, the in order to prevent what is the principle behind this the principle is to prevent wastage of public and private resources this is the main important principle so court before referring to arbitration prima facie can look into and see whether the claim is totally barred by limitation or not then it may prima facie only you should not go get deep into the facts and then come, come to a decision that is given to the arbitrator's power the court can at the time of appointing arbitrator prima facie it can say it can see whether the claim is barred by limitation or not the court again relied on bharat sanchar nigam case wherein it was held unless there is a pleaded case specifically adverting to the applicable section and how it extends the limitation from the date on which the cause of action originally arose there can be no basis to save the time of limitation the very very important point is the period of limitation for issuing notice of arbitration would not get extended by mere exchange of letters or mere settlement discussions or by negotiation once the clock starts ticking then by merely saying no no i exchange letters i was sitting with them to settle the issue or i was negotiating them that will not stop the clock once it has started it will start running never it will stop so supreme court observed that what is deserved discernible is that there is a fine distinction between the plea that the claim raised or barred by limitation and the plea that the application for appointment of arbitrator is barred by limitation as already said we have already seen this now the question is when does the cause of action arise the position of law is that mere failure to pay may not give rise to a cause of action again this is very very important mere failure to pay may not give rise to a cause of action however once the applicant has ascertained its claim and respondent has either denied such claim or failed to reply the cause of action will arise after such denial or failure then supreme court relied on another case b and tag case three principles were laid down 
for deciding when the cause of action arose. 1. Right to receive payment ordinarily begins upon completion of the work. B. That is 2. A dispute arises only when there is a claim by one side and its denial or repudiation by the other side. That is second. Third. The accrual of cause of action cannot be indefinitely postponed by repeatedly writing letters or sending reminders. So, Supreme Court says it was important to find out the breaking point at which any reasonable party would have, would have abandoned the efforts at arriving at a settlement and contemplated referral of the dispute to arbitration. Such breaking point would then become the date on which the cause of action could be said to have commenced. So, this is very important again. It is important to find what is the breaking point. And at that point, the party would have abandoned all the efforts of a settlement or referring or uh, um, uh, negotiations, etc. Such will be the breaking point. Then it becomes a date on which the cause of action arises. That is what the Supreme Court says. Then Supreme Court get, uh, says in the present case, the right of the petitioner to make a claim arose only when a positive assertion was made in March 2018, which was denied by the respondent on 28-3-2018. The limitation period available to the petitioner would have to come to an end on 27-3-2021, that is three years. However, due to COVID, Supreme Court extended the uh, limitation period. That we all of us uh, we know. So I need not have to repeat that. The effect of that order was that the excluded period, as a necessary consequence, results in enlargement of time over and above the period prescribed. In this case, when calculated, the limitation period will come to an end only on 13-3-2023. So the claim is also within the limitation period. So then the connected question was, when the arbitration is said to have commenced, Supreme Court again relies on Bharat Sanjar Niham case and says, there must be a clear notice invoking arbitration, setting out the particular dispute which must be received by the other party within a period of three years from the rejection of the final bill, failing which the time bar would prevent. In the present case, Supreme Court says the notice invoking arbitration was issued on 29-11-2022, which is within the three-year period from the date on which the cause of action arose. Thus, it cannot be said that the claim sought to be raised or ex facie time barred or a dead claim on the date of commencement of arbitration. Supreme Court said courts must adopt two tests before appointing an arbitrator. What is the what are the two tests? One, whether the petition under section 11 is barred by limitation or not. That is the first test for the appointment of arbitrator under section 11, whether it is barred by limitation or not. Second test. Whether the claim sought or ex facie debt claim and thus barred by limitation on the commencement of arbitration proceedings. Both they should see. If either of these issues are answered against the party, the court may refuse to appoint the arbitral tribunal. Finally, Supreme Court uh, uh, appointed arbitrator. Uh, Supreme Court suggested to the parliament one important thing. It says, see the, uh, the main object and purpose of ANC Act itself is to arrive at a decision in a shorter period. The time of three years applying the uh, Article 137 of Limitation Act for appointment of arbitrator, time of three years in the view of the Supreme Court, it is an unduly long period going against the very spirit of uh, very spirit of ANC Act. So, Supreme Court says, uh, suggested to the Parliament to bring an amendment in the section itself 
fixing a limitation period for appointment of arbitrator. That is how the uh, Supreme Court judgment ends. So, to sum up, Supreme Court says, one is there are two things, appointment of limitation for appointment of arbitrator, limitation for the claim. Both needs to be checked by the court, refer, uh, by the referral court before appointing an arbitrator. But in the second limitation for, uh, for the claim, only a prima facie test has to be applied. It cannot go in detail. That is given to the, that discretion has been given to the uh, arbitrator. That is what Supreme Court says. Uh, a wonderful judgment. So I thought I, I can share this judgment. It will be very useful. Uh, because many companies nowadays, uh, they are preferring arbitration, the alternative mode of dispute resolution. So this is a very important judgment. Thank you. Have a great day.